Doubt. How many of you have ever doubted yourself? Yeah, okay, well, maybe I should rephrase that question, that question. Who in here has never experienced doubt? Yeah, I thought so. So you're in really, really good company. Because every leader, now let's make that every person experiences doubt. Maybe you're asking, you know, am I, am I doing the right thing? Am I on the right track? Am I good enough? Your head starts to spin, you become anxious, maybe you question everything, you cannot make a decision. Now imagine how much more effective, how much more decisive and confident you'd be if you could just eliminate doubt from your life. And that is just doubt. Right? And doubt is one of, we found, 22 core leadership skills that you are probably missing. Now, of course, you could take a class or you could read a book, and I hear there are several good books out there on this topic. But what I'm going to give you today is a formula. It's a process to take these leadership skills and turn them into lasting habits. Over the course of several years, my research team studied 800 leaders around the world. And we didn't just survey them. We actually put them through a simulation and we tested them using these very challenging tasks. And we observed behaviors to try and differentiate who is effective and who is less effective. And the outcome of this research study is a catalog of not just information, but very specific exercises that can help you become a more effective leader. So let me tell you how this works. To turn a leadership skill into a habit, you need two things. And the first one is a cue. And maybe some of you are already familiar with cues that you use to change your life. How many of you have used sticky notes, for instance, that you wrote something down and put it on your computer or put it on your mirror? Right? Don't be shy. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's fine, right? We've all done that. I've done that. And when it comes to doubt, for instance, this is the one that I used. Stop doubting yourself. <laughs> But guess what, my friends, this is not very effective. Because what happens when the sticky note falls off your computer, <laughs> falls off the mirror? You've just lost the habit, right? Your habit goes away with it. So what we need is a better way. We need to find a cue that is actually naturally embedded in the environment where you're trying to build the new behavior. You need a natural cue. And I'll show you what a really good natural cue looks like. What's the first thing you think of when you, uh, to eat when you think of cinema? Oh, exactly, yes. So cinema is a natural cue to eat popcorn. And you've been conditioned to do this. In fact, the association of cinema popcorn is so strong that you're willing to spend $8 <laughs> for a bucket of popcorn when you go to the movies. Now, of course, you wouldn't spend that much anywhere else. Now, research has shown that the most effective cues are actually the beginnings or the ends of particular events um, or uh, a task. So these are natural cues that happen in our everyday life, so such as after you eat lunch, after you answer the phone, after you uh, read an email. And these are all natural cues that you can use to train yourself and, and get better leadership through new habits. The first thing or the question to ask yourself when you're looking for a natural cue is what is the first thing you notice right before something happens? So when you think about doubt, right, just think for a minute. What is the first thing that you notice right before you start doubting yourself. 
For most people, a statement like, if only I could, if only I could collect more information, if only I could do some more research, I would feel more certain, if only I could ask a friend or somebody to give me that comfort. And this realization that you're looking for more information, that is a natural cue. And we can work with that. So now all we have to do is take this natural cue and associate it with a particular behavior. That is how we start building these habits. Now, we've already experienced the cue behavior association. Meredith and I asked you a question. That was a cue. What did you do? You raised your hand, right? So I gave you a cue. I asked you a question. You responded with a behavior. You raised your hand. So this cue, this cue behavior association is at the crux of building new habits. So let's talk about, little, uh, about this, this behavior portion. Remember my sticky note? Don't doubt yourself. Now some of you might think that this is actually an actionable behavior, but it's not. And I'll demonstrate why that is the case. So let's do an experiment together here. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, good. What do you see in this picture? It's an elephant. Okay, good, good, good. You're paying attention. So now I'm going to ask you to stop thinking about this elephant. Can you do that? Stop thinking about the elephant. Don't think about it. Okay, I'll help you. I'm going to take the picture off. Please don't think about the elephant. By the way, did you notice there was an living group? No, 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 no. Stop thinking about the elephant. Don't think about the elephant. Do you see how hard it is? Just by the very nature of you trying to stop of doing something, you are actually thinking about it. You are obsessing about the elephant right now. <laughs> and that is why stop doubting yourself doesn't work. Because when you try to stop doubting yourself, if you see that sticky note, you try to do, what you do is you obsess about your own doubts. So we need a better way. What we need is an incompatible behavior. So we need to find a behavior that is direct opposite to doubting yourself. I'll, I'll give you an example that is very simple. So let's say that you have a kid, you're on the street, and the kid starts running. What do you do? Stop. You yell, stop running, right? What could you do instead of that? Walk. walk. You could say, yes, walk. Now walking and running are incompatible, right? You read my book. <laughs> 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 so walking and running are incompatible. You cannot walk and run at the same time. So when we, when we think about these leadership behaviors and when we think about doubt, for instance, we need to find something that is not compatible with doubt. What do you think that is? It's making a decision, right? Because making it, you cannot be doubting yourself or just experiencing doubt and making a decision at the same time. I'll, I'll give you an example. This, this is an example about squirrels, so bear with me. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're very clever animals. They're very nimble. They can run on trees. But have you seen a squirrel on the road? What does it do, especially when a car is approaching? Okay, it's, it stares, stops, takes a couple steps to the left, then starts doubting its decision, right? A couple steps to the right, and then looks at you and all of a sudden, bam, and it's over. <laughs> so, <laughs> for the squirrel, this indecision, this doubt became deadly. So my friends, to really st stop doubting yourself, the behavior, the incompatible behavior, stopping the doubt, is actually making a small decision. And there you have it. You have a leader habit exercise that we just put together. So we have a natural cue that we paired with an actionable behavior. After noticing that you want to collect more information, you ask yourself, what small decision can I make today? And then you make that decision. So it's a natural cue paired with an actionable behavior. Now, of course, cues and behaviors are important. But what have we really accomplished if we don't turn these behaviors into everyday habits? 
This is where most of our goals go wrong. We don't do the practice. We stay with the behavior paired with the cue, but we fail to make it automatic, to turn it into a habit. So now, let's actually deliver on this promise that you're going to walk away from here with the first step to forming a new habit. And this is how we do that. 166. It's not a highway. This is actually a formula that you follow to form a habit. You practice this association once a day for 66 days. Why 66 days? Because that's what the research shows. <laughs> so on average, for a human being, it takes 66 days to form a habit. So you associate the skew with the behavior for 66 days, and that is how you form a new habit. But some of you might have heard that a new habit is formed in 21 days. Yes? 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 Okay. You know where that's coming from? That piece of research actually is coming from area of plastic surgery because it takes on average 21 days for somebody to get used to their new look. <laughs> now, I don't know about you, but getting used to your new look and learning how to delegate well or how to plan and organize, <laughs> completely different things. So how long does it really take? takes 66 days. Once a day, 66 days. If you remember nothing else from this evening, just remember this one number. This is the formula. This is the key to success. Once a day, 66 days. I have one more story here for you. We're not going to talk about squirrels or elephants. We're kind of leaving animal kingdom. We're going to talk about, of all things, pizza delivery. <laughs> so I actually quite, I find quite, quite interesting. So some of you might remember in 1990s, pizza delivery drivers had a horrible reputation of reckless driving. Yeah? So what did they do to fix this problem? They put signs in pizza stores that said, Wait for it. Stop driving recklessly. <laughs> now, you already know <laughs> and can guess how well that actually worked, right? But they did find something that worked, and that was putting a different sign in pizza delivery stores. They actually took that research and habit formation, and they picked one very specific behavior, and they started with buckling up. So now, this did work, because you have a very specific, actionable behavior, right? And after these signs were posted all over the pizza delivery stores, there were researchers in the parking lot secretly watching the behavior of these drivers. And what they noticed was really remarkable. Not only did these drivers start buckling up, but they picked up automatically a whole new set of safe driving behaviors. They start using their blinkers more. They start slowing down at stop signs, and most importantly, they start slowing down, right? So this simple change, this simple behavior of buckling up started a whole chain reaction. It changed their driving habits. It became their keystone habit. Now, keystone habits don't only work for pizza delivery. I was working with, a, uh, with an executive not long ago who needed to improve his influence skills. And his behavior, his exercise, was asking about other people's concerns. And once this new habit took root, once, he's, once he was comfortable and he was asking people about their concerns, he not only became more influential, but it spread to other leadership behaviors as well. His coaching improved. His ability to negotiate improved. And it started, again, this whole chain reaction where he became a better leader all around. The German writer Goethe, and yes, that's how you say it in German, <laughs> uh, <laughs> One said, doubt can only be removed by action. And that action for you is to make a decision, no matter how small, 
Remember that squirrel. Don't be that squirrel. Make a decision. Because the only bad decision you can make is no decision at all. That's deep, huh? <laughs> um, but you won't stop really doubting yourself until you turn this new behavior into a habit. And how do you do that? Once a day, 66 days, exactly. You practice it. And now you have a new habit. But better yet, what you just learned is a new formula, a process, that you can use to become the leader you've always wanted to be. <laughs>